I want you to take 15 minutes and watch this video if you are really serious about Google advertising. If you wanna win, if you wanna get better return on investment, if you wanna have the best ads in your niche, in for your client's niche, for your company, watch this video. Because I'm going to give away some secrets that I use in every single account for every single client for every single company I've worked for and that I teach to every single one of my students. I'm gonna be showing you today an account structure that's going to change your Google Ads performance dramatically, and I promise that it will. If you implement what I'm about to show you, you are going to see significantly improved results I have over $10 million in ad spend that I've used and deployed for real revenue focused brands. These aren't brands that are just looking for brand awareness and reach. They are startups, they are mom and pop businesses, they are small companies, medium sized businesses, you name it. I've generated over $100 million in my 10 plus year career. I've had the joy of teaching 134 people advertising in one-on-one -on -one sessions and counting. And I execute in accounts every single day. I'm not a guru. Hopefully this is enough that you can at least trust that I know what I'm talking about. So common headaches that every Google advertiser, anyone that's really learned the platform understands, especially as we've gotten deeper and deeper into Google using their own AIs, Google getting sued for privacy issues and having to restrict our visibility into our own accounts, Google hiding search terms, and really more big brands using Google search and more brands in general using it every single year is that we've got poor return on ad spend, there's low volumes that are high quality, it's tedious, the workflows are frustrating, and there's very low visibility into how you can improve things. I hear it all the time from new students who have heard that Google Search is still one of the best platforms, which I personally still believe, but I hear it all the time. Competition is too tough, conversion costs are way too high, and you can't balance reach against efficiency. You're either choosing to be efficient with no volume or you're going for high reach and your margins are terrible. These are, every single person tells me these things. So I want you to use the following process or at least give it a try in your account for a few weeks because I think it's going to, in the long run, save you time because you're gonna have less headaches and you're gonna be spending less time bouncing around YouTube, trying to find some hidden gem, some hidden hack, some hidden technique, right? This is your hidden technique. You're going to improve sales, you're gonna delight more of your customers, and you're gonna be able to earn more money, whether it's for your own business, for the business of your clients, for the business of your company. Whatever the product is that you're selling, you're gonna be able to apply this. This works in any niche, because it's just a fundamental, it's just how you can approach developing your Google Ads account. So this is what most people's account structure look, looks like. And I'll zoom in so you can see a bit more. It's got bad CTR, it's got low ad relevance, it's got poor quality score. Now don't get me wrong, a great account could look like this too. But the problem is, so many accounts look like this that it's hard to distinguish whether you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong unless you have good return on ad spend. At the end of the day, it's all about money. But this is usually what a bad account looks like. It's very basic. There might be a lot of campaigns that don't have any specific structure or even a mediocre account you know, that has maybe some idea about how to use the platform will often look like this as well. 
the common theme that 100% of my students and 100% of really anyone that I've talked to that uses Google Ads, understands how to use the platform, but doesn't know how to get good results from the platform is it, it, it really comes down to a few buckets. One, they've either got low CTR relative to their competition, they'll show me their auctions insights, and they're overlapped 95% of the time on all of their keywords. They're in like fifth, sixth, I've even seen 10th or 15th place in some cases, really insane industries like legal or insurance or any uh, dentistry, you know, surgery, et cetera. Um, they've got a bad landing page experience. Their ad is super irrelevant for the people that are searching. And yeah, as you guessed it, they have a super poor quality score. And as you can see from the graphic on the left, when you have a quality score of say three out of 10, your cost per click is actually gonna cost 134% more. You're gonna get penalized against someone who is bidding on the exact same keyword, the exact same search term even, for the same searcher that has a seven out of 10 quality score. So if you're three out of 10, and then Joe down the street is seven out of 10, you're gonna spend over double what Joe's spending on that keyword. And the thing to remember as we're going through this and as you're re really watching any other video on this channel is that Google Ads is a game where the goal is to delight people. You need to delight them across the entire journey with your keyword selection, with how, word your ad, how well your ad matches that keyword, how well your website matches your ad, matches your keyword, and then, of course, having a good product that's gonna entice them to actually buy, right? All of that data is tracked by Google Ads, and a 10 out of 10 quality score comes as a result of that. It's not the other way around, right? You can have a 10 out of 10 quality score, get people all of the way to your product page, and it's relevant, but if the product's not good, you know, people aren't gonna, people are gonna see through that, they're not gonna buy it, right? So you really have to be fully locked in on each one of these pieces. You can't just have good ads. You can't just have good keyword research and good keyword targeting. You can't just have a good website. Sometimes you can get away with having just a good product, but you really wanna have all of these four items super locked in. And don't freak out over quality score, but do every piece of it right, and you're going to improve a lot of the experience, and as a result of it, quality score will improve. So I wanna introduce you to something I use in every single account. It's called a single keyword ad group, or a SCAG. I also use a variant of this called a single theme ad group, which combines multiple keywords that are very, very tightly related. This is a highly organized form of account structure where there is one ad group per keyword or theme. The ads in the keyword or in the keyword group are then fully devoted to those keywords. So essentially, as you can see the structure, as opposed to the graphic that we had earlier, there are ad groups that are dedicated to one keyword as opposed to one ad group with a bunch of ads and a ton of keywords, which is what most people's accounts look like. And that's where a lot of inefficiencies can happen. And we'll, we'll get into why this is so much better, but essentially you've got your campaign. Within your campaign, you've got your first ad group that ad group is gonna have one or two responsive search ads. I always recommend having a couple ads running. Maybe you're gonna do some special things like a fake ETA or an FA ETA. Um, maybe you've got ETAs that are still in the account running just fine because they haven't been deprecated by Google. And then essentially what you're gonna have is you're gonna have one exact match keyword. And exact match is important here because broad match is you know, not for even advanced advertisers. I'd say you have to be very advanced to use broad match keywords correctly. So you wanna, you wanna just start when you're doing this, when you're implementing it in your own account, start with exact match keywords. 
And then your second one is going to be matched to a second keyword with a second responsive search ad focused purely on that keyword. So let's get into an example of this because I think it's gonna help under you understand what I'm talking about here. So let's pretend that we're Ray-Ban sunglasses and a way that Ray-Ban, you know, Ray-Ban's a, a very complicated business. Um, they are probably using a very, uh, you know, a very well-developed Google shopping account. But let's just pretend we're Ray-Ban and we're just entering the business. We sell sunglasses of different types. Um, we also sell, a, we have a couple of other uh, business lines such as eyeglasses and maybe you'll, we also have accessories too uh, but but sunglasses are really important to us and we want to um, make sure that we're getting the highest return on investment on uh, that we can on the sunglasses search market and there's different types of uh, sunglasses that people look for um, but we also have a really good brand and a lot of people like to bid on us so we want to make sure that as we're entering this account, we first grab all of our branded share, and that's what we're going to look at in this example. But for you, it, it'll look totally different depending on your niche, depending on your area, but let's just get into it. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. So we've got polarized sunglasses. The keyword is Ray-Ban sunglasses for men, polarized. This is an actual search term that people search for. The responsive search ad is going to have many different, um, many different headlines in here. It's going to have you know, 10 to 15 different headlines that you can choose from, but we want it to be focused, the content of all of those headlines, to be focused on polarized men's Ray-Ban sunglasses, right? So essentially the keywords polarized, the responsive search ads are talking about polarized, the ad groups talking about polarized. It's, it's fully logical, right? If you're someone searching for polarized sunglasses, are you gonna buy, are you gonna click from the, the ad that says polarized sunglasses? Or are you gonna click the ad that says men's Ray-Ban sunglasses? For me, I'm looking, I'm gonna click polarized every time. And that's the power of the strategy. So let's go into hexagonal, right? Hexagonal sunglasses are a trending type of sunglasses. We grab the, uh, the keyword. And you know, if you were just a generic sunglasses brand, right? Or you're just trying to uh, tap into that generic market, right? You would just remove the Ray-Ban part. You know, maybe you would have another one that's, you know, uh, say your brand is Oakley, right? And these would be, you know, your different ETAs, right? Who knows, right, what your selling points are. The point being, though, the fact that you have included and you're focusing on the hexagonal piece is automatically going to make your ad way more relevant, infinitely more relevant than someone's ad who doesn't. And so many people don't do this and they don't bother. And even after they find out about it, they say, oh, it's way too much work. I don't want to do it. So let's look at, you know, how this could also apply to another business unit. So let's look at glasses because, you know, we're a sunglasses company, but we also produce glasses. So a way that this could look, you know, it could break into, uh, this wouldn't be polarized, this would be progressives. Right? Some people in my family have progressives, very common, um, but you know, still want to be stylish even when you have progressives. This is in the 50s. So essentially, it's the same exact thing. You have progressives, you have the hexagonal, you have the specific product unit um, SKU. And you know, this can look, this can be very simple, right? Um, in the account, you, you would just really continue to add in ad groups as you find qualified keywords that you want to bid on. Um, and it doesn't have to be all that complicated. I mean, if you just pretend this is a Google Ads account, you just copy in, you know, in this new one, maybe we're, we're selling like wooden frame 
eyeglasses, right? I'll change this text. Wooden frame glasses, right? And then you would change this to wooden frame men's glasses. And then your keyword, you guessed it, wooden, wooden frame men's glasses. And it's about as fast as me doing it in Figma, probably even faster if you do it yourself, right? So this is incredibly easy. It's incredibly straightforward. And this is actually a good way to improve your copywriting skills because you're gonna have very high level of consistency in what the user is looking for. And so the validity of the advertising tests that you're running, say you wanna try different copy styles, say you watch one of my videos about how you can use ChatGPT to speak in the voice of different uh, famous advertisers like Ogilvy or Burnett, this is a perfect playground for you to test that. So that's single keyword ad groups. And I'm gonna be honest, it's way more work to do this. It's going to save you time in the long run because it's so much more effective, but you have to manage, I, I, I have to be honest, I have to, I have to tell you the cons. You have to manage a lot more ad groups. You have to write a lot more ads. You have to customize everything, customize every landing page. But if you do this, it's going to be so much better. So if you're asking yourself, why should I do it? Try it for two weeks. Look at your ad account right now. Pull out every keyword that's performing and try this structure. Let me know how it goes. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments. Please give it some love, you know, share it, like it, subscribe, notifications on. I'm gonna be releasing a lot more content. I'm gonna be trying to go for closer to daily uploads. So if you can just give it some love and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, um, and what you wanna learn about Google advertising. I've done this for 10 years. So really excited to share what I know and hopefully teach a lot more people um, along the way.